All right, everybody, if you look at that closely, this is a great way to start it. These are the strongest points I have. Now, they're all between two and three inches. They are devastatingly thick, strong quartz. This is a, in response to a shout out that said, you know, what are the strongest quartz tips you find? I don't find any quartz. You know, and this is an indigenous material for Eastern North Carolina, coastal Piedmont, where I am. So they needed to figure out a way to make this work. We're going to take a look at these today. And before I do, as we take a good look at this, and look at this group, this fantastic group of wicked strong tips. I mean, we're talking about 50 caliber Armalite. We're talking about sniper rounds that just devastate when they hit. Uh, but these were ambush hunters. Up close, personal, brutal. In terms of that line of dart tips, that's what you're looking at here. Brutal for eastern bison, elk, deer, bear, uh, brutal. And so we're going to take a look at these. And as we do, I'm going to do something here, if I can handle it. Take a look at this. And uh, now, hang in there for a second. It didn't shut off. We got something going on here. Okay. Right here, as you can see, this is a common sight. That's why I keep my display quality pieces safe. For those of you just tuning in, acoustics have changed because I've just ducked into my closet here. And whether you're looking at small tips and there's 30 in a bin, some of you have seen this, or the small teeny quartz as we've seen. See, they all live there. There was about 30. Those big tips all came right out of this little bin. They fit in easy with room to spare. Yeah, I keep it so it looks full because it looks good that way. But there's a lot of room. So it comes out of that bin. That's an empty bin, but we've got a lot. I mean, there's serrated pieces here that look just absolutely great. If I can get the focus working. Some great stuff. There's bins that hold absolute smokers if you're new tuning in here. And uh, I could go on and on because it doesn't matter where you go up here. It doesn't matter where you go in this box. Uh, to me, it's all absolute smoke. You can go down here to where I have my Guilfords, right across the alley. You'll find a whole bunch of Guilfords in here. Guilford Yumas, going through time, Stone Age, North American Indian, dispensations of time. You go all the way to the bottom, it wouldn't matter. As you can see, and I'm not going to spend too much time here, I want to get back up top there. But there's everything from rhyolite tips of different sizes. I keep them based on different qualities that the tips have. And uh, you can just go through and have a time. Here's a bin full of a bunch of notch points. Nothing wrong with that. I've got a bin where I keep the ones that are absolute favorites to me, just smokers. It's just fun stuff. It's a great idea. You can jump across here and find another bin full of variegated, var variated different materials, rhyolites. But smokers nonetheless. I'm trying to stay out of the, the light. All right. Now, hang in there. Hang on for a second. It'll be fun. All right. See, we didn't take too much time. I'm in the bathroom, so I'm not going to give you a, a, a show of what my bathroom looks like. All right, here, let's check these points out and see if we can make it efficient. All right, I remember Jones, he had a bowl full of points and he was just talking about them. And so I wanted to do that. I do that more than once just as a display. Now remember, keep in mind, these are my strongest points. Look at this thing. Beaver point this came from. It's not snapped off. That's the way they made it. And it's a devastatingly strong tip. It's going to take uh, it's going to take a toll on whatever they used it on. What I find fascinating is that they hunted in groups, not singular solitary hunters like us, like I would with my seven millimeter Remington mag. Nope, they hunted in groups and relied on one another. But they knew that their shot had to count when they hit something. It had to slow it down. It had to help the group. It had to injure the animal, maim it most of the time. Didn't kill it right out. And so then they could go up and finish it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to uh, have that, uh, that buffalo bone dagger. If you haven't seen it, go back in my videos that Mike made me. Because uh, it was brutal, but uh, it was real. These kind of 
tips would would hurt an animal. They would maim the back leg or part of the animal, slow it down so they can go in and put more shots in it and just put the kill on it. And if it's been slowed down, it can't move anymore, they'd go up and handle it personally. They wouldn't go up and start unloading shots on it. They'd just go up with a knife or a dagger, finish the deal, and then harvest the animal. So important. Look at this tip. Great Mono Mountain, right? Great Mono Mountain. And so these tips here, right in the background, are the ones that I find would be completely devastating. Devastating. In a good way. Because you had to have food. You had to provide for your family, right? Here's a mall mountain underneath here. Look at this thing. And I'm talking strong. Those of you who know the hardest rating of quartz and what have you, if you don't find it where you are in the country or what have you, uh, check it out. Some of you know already immediately how brutal and how hard this stuff is. It doesn't need to look perfect. It doesn't need to look like uh, coming off an assembly line. Remember, we live in the year 2017. Everything we buy looks like a million other products we buy. Not this stuff. That's what's unique about these ancient Indian artifacts. Not this stuff. You could have arrows suited up with three of these tips, ready to go. They don't look anything alike. You go over here and pull another one. Let me look which one I want next. This one right here. From Notchville. Thick. Devastatingly thick. Marl Mountain. Little strawberry quartz in it. All of it's translucent. Strong as can be. Love it. So I'm going to move right along. I'm not going to take too much time and set them up just on, be, on behalf of the fact that these are the strongest points I had. Look at this. Look at this tip. A little bit of a, a Guilford variety. Uh, I don't know if my focus is working. Sort of hate that. I do the best to show you up close and personal on days where I'm not out in the field or haven't been able to find anything and just show you something, something that's great, something that you might not be able to see that often. That's a complete and perfect point. They relieved it off the back so they could haft it right in and it would do exactly what we're talking about. It would slow their prey down and that would be it. That would be it. Excuse me. What do we got next? Look at the size of this point. I just recently found this, so this is on... Actually, I couldn't film it. Uh, it was raining that day, I think. This is a great point, though. It's worked every square inch. Like I said, made to do what it needed to do. Provide. Provide for the clan. Provide for the family. Provide for their mates and their children. Maim. If it hit something, it needed to slow it down. It needed to put a hurt on it. Then they move in to finish, and that was the celebration. And it was a, it was an honorable thing to them. Still is. There's nothing gross about it. In our modern society where we go to the store and buy a pack of chicken and buy a pack of beef, we just, we just don't even understand the virtue, the spiritual balance of going out and harvesting our own food. Many of you do because you're hunters, but, uh, you know, points like this, they knew, were produced for one reason. Look how thick this is. To devastate. To devastate so that they could mobile, mobile hunters, quick and efficient on their feet, track that animal. It doesn't matter whether it's a mile, two miles, track it down and harvest it. But they needed to put a slow on it as quick as possible. Hitting them with one of these 50 caliber rounds is going to hurt. So strongest points I have, uh, you know, were designed to do the job. Love that point. Found it Mecca. Love that point. No disagreements with that. Love it. All right. This point, early point that I found over at High Rise. Again, you're seeing the similarity in the size and the strength. These have been seen before, maybe two years ago, though. Uh, and so with the note that I had about courts and about individuals somewhere in the country not finding it, question was simply, what are the strongest uh, projectile points I have? Well, when it comes to hardness rating, I think a lot of you would agree, these quartz will do it for you. That's a nice point, isn't it? A little bit of a mile mountain variety, stem point. 
little strawberry quartz going on. I give you the contrast on the gray, what comes out great. That's why I always use the charcoal gray. Love that point. I love them all, right? All of them that I get out of my display box are points that I've, I've already come to the points where I absolutely love them. Here's a point that I found at Backside Cove. It's a great piece of crystal. Look at this piece. Of beauty, isn't it? But strong, strong as can be, devastatingly durable. It would stick in, let alone shatter bone, coming at velocity. And that's a great thing when you're talking about living, when you're talking about breaking time where maybe you have a, you've gone four days as a North American Indian, you haven't had anything to eat for your family or for your children. I'm telling you what, that was just the way business had to happen. So they made things like this to take care of business. No doubt, right? So up close and personal, so you get a chance to really see this stuff. What they were able to make in courts and why, because it was so devastatingly strong. And in the air, hitting flesh and bone unstoppable. So, I mean, I sort of, I re-celebrate with them because this, this stuff was made to work and it did work. Love it. That's an incredible point, isn't it? From Sacred Sands. Insight 2. All right, everybody. I think I gave you a good look at all that stuff. Good show of it, that is. Now let me show you from this angle. I'm waving the camera all over, but it might have not been as productive as I wanted to, but look at this lineup. Just to give you a balanced perspective of these kind of points. My strongest points, the strongest points that I have, and uh, hopefully that'll do it for you out there if you're interested in seeing them. These are thick. This is artillery right here, ammunition. And it could have been suited up, you know, imagine them all on at battle darts and ready to go, ready to hunt, ready to do the job that they were made to do, ready to provide for your family, for your children, for your mate. I'm gonna tell you what, it would secure lots of things for the tribe, honor, what have you. And so it wasn't just a, Something they wanted, it was something they absolutely needed in these points. So as I finish off, take a look at these. And thank you for tuning in to Indian Trace. It's just a, it's, it's a pleasure for me to be able to show some of this stuff in a way maybe that you haven't seen or you don't get to find yourself. For me, I'm just absolutely humbled and thankful that I can go out and, and locate where this stuff is in the ground. And then it just comes in almost magically. Well, enough said. Hope you find out there and uh, spread the word, everybody. Life is rich.